Good to see you here in worship. It is also good to welcome those that are worshiping with us uh, via Facebook and through the recordings that go out on cable. Uh, we may be separated in space, but we are united in our spirit and in our desire to be one church of Jesus Christ. So again, welcome all who are worshiping. Just a few announcements. We're trying to trim announcements down by reminding you to use your, your uh, phone app. It's free for all, and you allow notifications, and you'll stay as current as I do uh, about the life and program and ministry and outreach of this church. That's a critical way to stay connected. You also can use the uh, church directory there. Um, you can find Bible studies and other resources that are wonderful, as well as watching this service. So after the brilliant sermon that you hear today, when you want to hear it again, you can just go and hear it again. All the time. All the time. All the time. Uh, we want to just have a few announcements tonight. Our youth will be gathering. Um, they know the protocol and we welcome them back. Today is also the deadline for our middle and high school kids participating in pilgrimage. Uh, instead of us having a 5,000 youth event in Fayetteville, it's being produced to be uh, live streamed to us, broadcast to us, and we will have our youth here. Uh, and so deadline, those of you at home, make sure you get that scheduled if you want to be a part. Um, another event coming up is um, La Musique. Uh, Rachel Mundine runs a, uh, an event, a pageant uh, each year. Normally it's in one of the schools. They're not able to host it, so we're hosting that in our fellowship hall for her this year. She's extended the deadline. Please go and look at the announcement. It was in your printed newsletter, in your phone, on the web. Um, find out if you'd like to participate. Uh, there is an age limit, though, isn't there? Well, it's for three, age three through high school. Three through high school. Uh, so sorry, Jeannie. Yeah. <laughs> you and I don't get to participate. But do see Rachel after this if you'd like to, to talk about a child, a grandchild, a friend, a neighbor. Uh, Rachel will talk to you and help you to uh, issue that invitation. And it is a free, a free pageant uh, and a wonderful time. They help do scholarships for, uh, for music students. Uh, and so it's a, a great thing. Uh, we do have our Sunday school that is met during this hour. We welcome those worshiping with us via um, the internet upstairs in Sunday school. Um, and others. Any other announcements? <clears throat> then let's prepare our hearts for the worship of Almighty God.
grace to you and peace from God who was and is and is to come. Amen. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the earth. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Friends, let's remain standing and worship together by singing for all the saints. And as a people of faith, may we share together in the opening prayer. Almighty God, you gave your saints different gifts on earth, but one holy city in heaven. Give us grace so to follow their good example in all virtuous and godly living, so that we may come to know the great joy which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen.
Each and every week, we come together as a people of faith and share in the Apostles' Creed. I want to point out those last two lines that we say, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. That's who we are as a people of faith. So together, may we share in the Apostles' Creed our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, we remember those of our church family and community who have died in the faith and preceded us into eternity with God. Um, if there are others, either that we failed to list or that you would like to name at the end, uh, you'll be given an opportunity to just simply speak those allow. But let us remember Glenn Lee Keenan. Jane Willis Dudley. Colin Dorcas Wall. Dwayne Fritzinger. Elizabeth Lib Brown. Sharon Bowman Quinlan. Cecilia Wirtle Jalosinski. Hilda Hollowell Howell. Barbara Dealey. Herman Boyd. Winslow Ballou Jr. John Michael Helms. John Thaddeus Bennett Jenkins, Jr. Craig Patrick McClanahan. Helen Ann Holbrook. Douglas Freeman. James Clarence Butch Munns, Jr. Peter Brenner. Earl Kinney Wade the Third. Ruby Morgan. Bill Glover. Louise Woodson Outlaw. Doris Wilsberg Jenkins. David Mears Pennington. Ronald Linwood Smith. Sanford Sam Wade. Are there other names that you would like to speak aloud in memory? Jack, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. John Bunn Singen. John 
Bonici. Let us pause for a moment of holy silence and remembrance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These acts of remembrance have indeed been prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving for these lives dearly loved and for all of us who have such in our hearts and lives. There are certainly other prayers. Prayers of thanksgiving and celebration. Prayers of intercession and need. Um, Are there such that you would like to lift up this morning? Please. Yes, um, for Debbie Gilligan, who found the camp For your sister-in-law, Debbie, as she faces this battle, but for all who are facing this battle. We learned this morning of a 16-year-old in Florida, connected distantly to our church, um, who is really struggling. And so we pray for her um, and for her, her special needs. There's also an infant son of one of our local teachers who is going to Duke this week for heart surgery. And so we pray for that infant and for that family. For the Wade family. You heard us add two names at the end of the list. Um, Sam Wade, Earl, and Dan's brother died last night. Um, and then yesterday we did the service for, uh, for Ron, Ronnie Smith. We also want to remember Mike Guthrie. His mother, Juanita, died last week. And um, that service will be Tuesday. Our upcoming for the elections, for our nation, for our world, we pray. For Rilla Gould? For Rilla Gould. Uh, Rilla's doing better. We'll be starting her rehab. and We pray for Rilla and for all who are in care facilities or rehab. It's an isolating reality. And so pray for their, their comfort, their strength. Send them a card. Make a call and lift them in prayer. Other prayers. Pardon? Thank you. Thank you. Susan and John Craver. We continue to lift both Susan and John in prayer. Let's go together to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer, encouraged by your invitation to pray because that reassures us that you hear us, you know us, and you desire to walk with us in grace and strength. You know our prayers, those we speak in our hearts as well as those on our lips. We ask, Lord, for you to be given all glory and honor for your your magnificent grace in this world through Jesus Christ. Uh, We pray, Lord, for all in need, especially those named this day, whether cancer or surgery uh, or grief or trial or struggle. Lord, we pray your presence with them and the use of your church, this body, to stand alongside all in need. We pray, Lord, for this nation, for this world, Uh, We pray that we would be a people of truth who would stand firmly uh, on your holy word for the truth of our lives um, and for all leadership. We pray that you would guide this church to be faithful as we look around us for needs and and accept that you've gifted us to help others, uh, help us to share the good news of Jesus with all in our midst. 
We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening scripture this day comes from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Please hear these words. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want them to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to the myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministries. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's really good to know that there are children who are worshiping with us. And while you may not be right here, you are right here. You're in our hearts. And we are so glad that, uh, that you're worshiping with us. So gather close so that we can share. A few weeks ago, uh, Pastor Sarah spoke about lights and candles. She talked about the Bible being uh, a light to our path, a lantern that guides our feet. So I thought, well, I'm going to use a candle today. See that candle? Now, what's a candle for? I, I mean, I guess you could use this as a doorstop. I, I guess you could use it as a club or maybe a rolling pin. But what's a candle really for, kids? candle is for light. <coughs> Jesus said, no one lights a candle and hides it under a bushel, but they set it up on a stand so that it can give light to all in the house and so that people can see the light. You and I, just like these candles here representing people we love that have died and gone to heaven, we're to have the light of Christ in us. And we shine for Jesus. We don't, we don't shine for our own glory. We shine so that people can see our lives and give glory to our Father who's in heaven. I believe that the light of Jesus is in each one of you each one of you children, and I pray that you will let that light shine. Shine through your eyes and your smiles, through your voices, through the way you read your Bible and study your Sunday school lesson, through the way you help other people, starting right at home. Be a light for Jesus so that glory can be given to God. Let's pray, kids. Gracious God, we thank you for the light of Jesus. Burn brightly in us, Jesus, so that people can see you and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, and we say together, amen. amen. Thanks, kids. This is our normal time of tithes and offerings, but as you will know, there's offering baskets at both doors, that we have the app on the telephone that you can mail in your offerings, and we're so 
deeply appreciative of that. Many of you are here this day because of the names that we just read off and the candles lit. And so our offerings this day is that cloud of witnesses that our loved ones have given us that now as Pastor Powell just shared, it's up to us for that light to shine but then our faces, the glory of God. So our offerings as we listen to the choir is to continue to share that good news, to preach, to live our lives in such a way that we pour out to others. Amen.
May we sing together, take my life and let it be. be seated. And will you pray with me? Gracious God, you bring us together even when we are far apart, no matter what it is that separates us. Silence all the thoughts and voices in our hearts and our minds that don't come from your spirit. Speak through me, Lord, or speak in spite of me. But speak, Lord, because we are your children and we are listening. Amen. My mom was really good at holidays. And I think Gray thought maybe I had finally lost it the other night at dinner. <laughs> Bradley asked me, when are we going to put the Christmas tree up? See, we had just finally bought him this eight-foot artificial Christmas tree to go in our big house with our tall ceilings. And it does all the tricks, like you can have the white lights or the colored lights. You can make it flash the lights. And he's so excited about it. Because since we spent Christmas last in our house, which was a really long time ago, um, the child has been talking about wanting an artificial Christmas tree because he thinks real Christmas trees are sad because at the end of the holiday season, you have to throw it away. And by then, it is his friend. And he does not want to throw his friend away. So he asked me at dinner, when are we going to put the tree up? And without hesitating, I said, November 1st. Halloween will be over. We can put the Christmas tree up. I know you're excited. We'll decorate it with Thanksgiving stuff. We'll make turkey handprints, and we'll cover the tree with little cards that remind us of all the things we're thankful for. See, that was the sort of stuff that my mom did at the holidays. No matter what was going on in our lives, she always figured out how to make holidays magical and special for me. And I think this year, with all that's going on in all of our lives, we all need to figure out how to make holidays a little bit more special. You know, I'm so thankful for all of the holiday memories that I got to spend with my mom. And even though she didn't really get to share that many with my kids, 
I hope that her example is living on through me. See, she wasn't perfect. None of us are. But that's a legacy that I want to imitate for my kids in our home. See, we all have role models, those saints who have gone before us, whose lives and legacies inspire us and help us as we seek to follow Christ by showing us the way to follow him here in this world. And I think that's why Paul tells this story about the Macedonian church here in his letter to the Corinthians. So here are these words from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, See that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Paul is writing in the second letter to the Corinthian church to inspire them in their faith, but particularly to encourage them to participate in an offering for the impoverished church in Jerusalem. Paul, a former devout Jewish Pharisee turned Christian evangelist, hoped to raise money for the Jewish church, there's Jewish Christians in Jerusalem, as an act of symbolic unity in the early church. The Jerusalem church needed funding, but they also needed to understand that those Gentile converts to their faith were now a part of the family of God, their own brothers and sisters through the body of Christ. The Gentile Christians that those Jewish Christians wanted to exclude from table fellowship would be providing the funds for the feast, and in doing so, the whole church would be united through generosity. But the Corinthians weren't so convinced. They had begun to collect a love offering, but they hadn't finished the course. They had started to plant and sow some seeds. They had begun pouring their lives out, but they had gotten off track. So Paul gives them a role model. He tells them the story of the church in Macedonia. The Macedonian church had been hit hard by persecution. Their members had lost jobs and income because of their love for Jesus. Members were killed for their belief. Their faith was tested in every way imaginable. But grace abounded in their community. They continued to pour their lives out as an offering. They continued preaching and teaching, planting seeds of God's love and grace, and reaping a harvest of faith in their community. And they continued giving all they could to the church supporting both their local congregation, the people that they knew, but also supporting the ministry of the whole church through giving to Paul's collection for the Jerusalem church. Not because they had to, not because they thought they should, but because they wanted to. 
Paul says their extreme poverty resulted in rich generosity. Like the widow who gave two coins that Jesus talks about in the Gospels, the Macedonians gave out of the richness of their heart, not the amount in their pocket. Paul said they held nothing back. They gave themselves. You know, Paul, he gave himself too. In the first reading, Paul offers himself up as a role model for young Timothy to follow. Timothy was this young pastor who Paul was training to follow in his footsteps. He wanted Timothy to continue sowing seeds for the kingdom, even as he himself prepared to die writing the letter from prison. And he writes these words to Timothy that I think speak to us to this morning as we figure out what it looks like to plant and sow generously. He said this, preach the gospel, be patient, endure hardship, live in to your calling. And this is the, the most important part, I think. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is in store for me, and not only me, but all those who follow me, a crown of righteousness. See, Paul loved this image of his life as a drink offering being poured out for the sake of the gospel. He used it in his letter to the Philippians, too, and it's an image that can really be found throughout all of Scripture. Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper that his life was a drink offering poured out for the new covenant. He picked up that cup of wine and he said, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. In the Old Testament too, the drink offering was an important part of life for God's people. The drink offering, it accompanied almost every sacrifice made at the temple. It was there for the morning and evening daily sacrifices, the sacrifices that all God's family made at those three great feasts, and all personal sacrifices, too. It was the last step in the sacrificial ritual. The whole drink was poured out in the holy plate, symbolizing that nothing was held back from God, but instead poured out. The aroma, not of the drink itself, but the whole heart offered was said to be an offering that was holy and pleasing to God. The drink offering was always before God, always set apart for his service, for the purpose of pleasing God. And isn't that who we are called to be too? We're called to be drink offerings always before God, always in his presence, always set apart for his service. We're called to pour out our whole lives as an offering, holy and pleasing to God, giving not just our resources, but instead our everything, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness, our testimony. We're called to give each moment up as an offering and an opportunity to see God and to serve him. We're called to pour ourselves out for God and others, pouring out our lives generously, even perhaps sacrificially, as we seek to follow Christ and the example of the saints who have gone before us. And like Paul says to Timothy and the Corinthians, we're called to finish well. We're called to finish the race that is set before us, no matter what comes up. Paul himself, he faced trials and temptations. The Macedonian church, they faced this financial crisis. Even Jesus pleaded with God in the garden, God, take this cup, but ended his prayer with those powerful words, not my will, but yours, Almighty Father. So I guess the question for us this morning is this. Will we finish well and stay the course? 
Well, we stay the course through the storms, the hardships that come up in our lives. Will we stay the course when the way seems foggy and we don't know where we're headed? Will we stay the course even through the easy seasons of life when it's all too easy to forget just how much we need God? Will we continue to pour out our lives like a drink offering, giving our whole selves generously to a God who's so generous to us even now in 2020? as we navigate through these chaotic times. Y'all, there's so much hope in these passages set before us this morning. God gives his grace to us generously, even in abundance. He gives us seeds to sow in the lives of others. He gives us a store of seeds, and he calls us to pour them out and plant them knowing that how much we pour out, he will, re- he will refill our cup so we can keep going. There's a sports metaphor that we use sometimes. A coach telling their players, all right, guys, get out there. Leave it all out. Leave it on the court. Leave it on the field. Come back empty. I think the same metaphor works for us as the farmer sowing seeds of God's grace and love and joy and peace and forgiveness and blessing. We're called to sow generously, to leave it all out on the field so that we'll reap an even more abundant harvest. We're called to pour it all out, to leave it out there so that when we join those saints and we feast together at the heavenly banquet, we might hear those words that we all long to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. And hear this good news. We can leave it all on the field. We can pour our whole lives as an offering because Jesus Christ offered his life up for us so that we can have life forever. We can give our whole selves, offering up all that we have and all that we are because no matter how much we pour out, God will pour back into us if only we will let him. See, there's always times in our lives, and there will be, when we feel empty. But in those moments, we have to run to God and run to those saints in our lives that point us back to him. We can't pour out from an empty cup. Paul taught Timothy and the Corinthians, that everything we do is in response to God. And this God is so generous, he doesn't ever hold back his grace and love for us. He wants to fill us up so that we can pour ourselves out into the world. So this week, let's follow the example of the saints. Let's follow the example of Jesus. Let's follow the example of Paul and the Macedonian church. Let's give and give abundance pouring out our whole lives so we can experience abundant life now and forever. Let's be generous, even in the face of persecution and hardship, because God is always generous with us. Let's finish the race well, friends. We come to the table this morning and feast. We eat this meal, we believe, with all the saints as a sign and foretaste of the heavenly banquet that waits for us. This meal is the meal that fills us up. So no matter how empty we may have felt walking in through these doors, we can be filled up even to the point of overflowing when we walk back out into the world. Amen. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you. Would you join me, please? That's right. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. 
Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we pray. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us give thanks. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending him saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, again gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and the world for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died, Christ Christ is is risen, risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 When we break the bread... Is it not a means of sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a means of sharing in the blood of Christ? If there's anyone who did not pick up communion, an usher will be glad to bring it to you now if you will show a hand. Let's feast together in this meal of grace, first with the wafer and then the cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand and sing with all the saints in glory.
walking out of here with an empty little cup in your pocket, but I hope that you have a full cup in your heart. May the love of God the Father, the grace of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you today and every day. Amen. Share his love.